When you squeeze a cow's hoof and bubbles come out the side of it like this, it's a very bad sign. This is the Hoof GP. You've all seen the intro, so you know how this hoof trim progresses. But when you pick a cow's foot up, even if you know it's lame, you've no idea what you're going to find. And right now, looking at this hoof with the grinder in my hand, all I'm worrying about is balancing the claws to make sure that half of her weight is on one claw and half is on the other, so that she's as comfortable as she possibly can be. Then, if we discover a problem, we'll deal with it in the best way we possibly can. I do happen to know that this cow is lame, so I'm already on the lookout for any signs of where that problem could be. So you can see here, there's clear separation in the white line tissue. This is actually bulging up because of the pressure from inside pushing down the way. All of this is loose. So there's a crack right around our heel. It's gonna peel from here all the way down to about here. So none of this is any use to the cow. In fact, it's a hindrance because dirt and manure and debris will be making its way in this hole, in this crack, in this crack, and making a real mess underneath. Although we don't truly know what is there, I suspect, like I say, that all of this is about to be removed. Although it's an educated guess, after trimming around 190,000 cows in my career as a hoof trimmer, I know that nothing is a certainty, so caution is the order of the day. As we peel away these layers of hoof horn, like peeling layers from an onion, we can all see the buildup of fluid, and that lets me know that this problem probably runs deeper than we would first think. I'm trying to be as gentle as I can, but as I slice away these layers of hoof horn from the sole of her foot, I'm also taking part of the wall horn, which is much, much tougher and requires a lot more force. Extending the flap backwards like that braces this foot a little bit more and stops it from juddering around as I pull my knife through the tough hoof horn. As I make these cuts, look at how deliberate my knife strokes are. I place the edge of the point of the blade gently, start my cut off slowly to make sure I'm cutting in the right place, and then force my fist through the rest of the cut. This is tedious and slow work, but we're getting to the important part. This is where it could all fall apart, or we could make a breakthrough and discover how far this abscess site truly goes. Either way, I know I need to be as careful as I possibly can. I can't see through the hoof horn, and effectively, I'm working blind. Her jumping like that is a sign that I'm getting close to the painful point. I need to take my time. As I flex the point of my knife against her sole, bubbles of fluid appear. Again, it's another sign, telling me what's underneath, telling me what's there, but what I can't yet see. This time, I push against the wall horn, not the sole of her foot, and it tells me that the abscess extends high up into the white line behind the wall horn. That looks like a stone, doesn't it? Well, it's not. I'm sure it's not a stone, but I double check with my knife because I'm about to flatten off that inner claw ready to take a block. And I don't want the stone to hit me in the hands. 
We dry off the claw we want to stick a block onto to make sure there's no hoof oil residue there and to make sure the block definitely sticks. Do you keep seeing that green glue and wonder where you can buy it anywhere in the world? Go to thehoofgp.com and you'll be able to find out. Go oo. <laughs> Did I say go oo there? He definitely said go oo. <laughs> Rewind that. Go to the hoof GP, go to, go to, oh okay, maybe I did. So as I press that, there's a bubble coming up through here and through here. So I know that this extends right up here into the white line and behind this wall hoof horn, meaning we need to remove this portion of the wall to let all of this ooze and gunk out so that this can start healing from the inside outwards. But it's extremely hard hoof horn, which is why I'm using the grinder here being as careful as I possibly can not to go too deep. If I make a mistake in this area of our foot, it could and probably would have serious consequences. Just as you break through the last little fragment, sometimes catches the grinder and does exactly that. Using this grinder day in, day out for hours on end means we've become extremely gentle and careful with its use. So I'm able to easily remove the remaining wall horn from this cow's foot. If I'd used a knife, the force needed could easily have led to a mistake. But with that said, it is back to the knife. I just need to tease these last remaining pieces of detached hoof horn away from the start point of this problem. If I don't fix the start of this problem, it will all have been for nothing because it will just keep growing in and in, keep cracking and keep being a problem. Let's try to get a rat ready as well. It was going so well. But it was unavoidable. That's the bit I need out. And that bit. Yeah. This is not absolutely perfect, but I am very happy with how cleanly this trim has ended up. While Kev's doing that, look, it's starting to rain a little bit. Scottish weather at its finest. The rain's actually coming down at 45 degrees, so we class that as a good day. Just like that, she's done.